our state is guaranteed a Final Four team for the second time in three seasons. Of course, two years ago, we had two Duke and Carolina meeting in New Orleans. Now we've got an all-919 Elite Eight. Shout out to our guy, Ian Eagle, on the call for CBS. We gave him one note on the air earlier this week. Just so you know, it's called the 919, where Duke, Carolina, and NC State reside, all to the Sweet 16. And at the close of the broadcast tonight, he said, the 919 is well represented. He's right. NC State, Duke, in the Elite Eight, in Dallas. And before we get into that matchup, it's only right we hit on the games that we saw to give us this matchup late Sunday afternoon with a trip to Phoenix on the line. NC State Marquette was first. And this is the part that you have to remember if you're a Wolfpack fan. Yes, it's become cliche to say, it's like 1983 all over again. Tim Peeler pointed this out, who's an NC State historian. This is crazier than 83. 83 was preseason ranked, that team. They were supposed to be really good. Then Derek Wittenberg got hurt, and then they went on the run in March. They didn't have as bad of a record at the end of the regular season as this NC State team did going on, you know, four straight losses to close the year and then having to win five in a row. Obviously, the ACC tournament wasn't that long at the time. This is different. It's truly unprecedented. That can be true while also saying the way that the pack is winning these games, not fluky. This is not a fluke. It follows suit today's game, really with the run that we've seen throughout the eight. When you go through each of these games, how much of it is luck, what we've seen? How much of it is NC State catching breaks? Other than the first half against Louisville in the ACC tournament and the Michael O'Connell shot in the uh, semifinal against Virginia, there was, all of this has been legit. State's been the right side in most of these games. And some of the stretches of the Oakland game, too, would probably qualify in that as well. The pack controlled Marquette throughout this game. Out-rebounded them convincingly. They never really looked rushed. They never really panicked. They were the more poised side. And you couldn't say that about Marquette. You couldn't say that about Shaka Smart's team. Other than Tyler Kolick, nobody was poised on that team. Four of 31 from three. It really is a whole new world WD that we're living in with this pack team. It's their first ACC championship since 87. It's their first elite eight since 1986. And you know, what's fitting about that 86 year. That was coach K's first final four with that recruiting class. So if you want to go back and ask yourself this question, when was the last time NC state outlasted both Duke and Carolina in the same year? It's when they cut down nets in 1983. That's what we're talking about when you speak how crazy tough it is and how crazy competitive it is to win in the state of North Carolina. That's why it's called the Hoop State, after all. So that's NC State Marquette. They never really let Marquette get into the game, and NC State out-rebounded them. They were the better side throughout that game. I think they led for 35 minutes, the last 35 minutes of the game. Duke and Houston, this could have been a first-round knockout. Houston, they hit five of their first six shots. They're leading 10-3. to We're not even at the first media timeout. And John Shire calls timeout. And you're just thinking, oh, boy, all the things that were said about Duke this week and how tough Houston is, maybe they're all true. Maybe Duke is soft. Maybe they're not going to survive. At that point, Duke hadn't even looked at the painted area. Like, let alone get the ball in there. John Shire calls timeout, and you've got to give credit to Kyle Filipowski and Ryan Young. WD, see if you can pull what Flip's final stat line is. I'm pretty sure he finished with a double-double. I know he was sitting on nine rebounds, and he finished well over the number that we gave out on the show, over 14 and a half points. A tremendous game for him, but assists, rebounding, just taking body blows. It does seem like Houston had that approach that Rick Barnes in Tennessee had a year ago in Orlando 
when Duke got eliminated of they can't call fouls on every possession. And Duke withstood a lot of uh, pressure and a lot of blunt bro, uh, blunt blows. What do you have on Filipowski? Not a double-double. 16 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists. Almost. Yeah, so he seven Almost. nine rebounds. I just assumed he would have grabbed one more rebound the last seven, eight minutes of that game. But they nope. withstood the punches. Okay. He was the best player on the floor. And obviously you can't talk about this game without talking about the injury in the first half to Jamal Shedd, one of the best players in the country, first team All-American, I think a finalist for uh, National Player of the Year, along with R.J. Davis, Zach Eady, and Dalton Connect from Tennessee. Shout out to Tennessee. I'm not going to sing Rocky Top with my <laughs> wife and the dog. I, I think I just heard Willow a second ago, so I might have woken up Willow the dog. My apologies to my own family. But we've got NC State and Duke in the Elite Eight. <laughs> this is a thing. I mean, it's, it's, I mentioned it before. I mean, NC State, this run is kind of eerily like UNC a couple of years ago. I'm so Where? mad at myself for picking against them. I'm so mad at myself. You did it again. I told myself, I told myself after the Syracuse game, I wasn't going to do did. it. And then you did it. And then I did. And, and then here I got we are. Not touching that game Sunday. Mm-mm. Nope. Probably a safe bet. No pun intended. Nope. Not touching that one at all. <laughs> I'm wearing the ACC hat tonight. Dude, ACC, man. Three. Three of the Elite Eight. And if Carolina didn't, you know what the bed. Yeah, I'll say I'll say uh, Amber heard the bed. Then you got you go. half of the Elite Eight. Clemson, little old Clemp, facing Alabama tomorrow, and you've got Duke, NC State. Is this the biggest Duke, NC State game ever? I'm hesitant to say that because forever's a long time. Uh, you do have an ACC championship with Reddick in 2003 that Duke won. Um, this is probably bigger than that because it's a trip to the Final Four. But, you know, like the, if you look at the 50s and 60s, where a lot of those guys came from when Duke was really starting to build it up, it was from NC State and from Everett Case. And there were some big, big meetings at the time, but that's a totally different college basketball. So, in modern college basketball, I don't think there's any doubt this is the biggest game ever between Duke and NC State, and we've got it on Sunday. Do you have an early lean, or do you even want to touch it? You know what? Give me NC State. Give me NC State. Why Who not? Who are you rooting for? You're a Carolina fan. Like, oh, I'm, rooting for, is, I'm rooting for NC State. Like the, this must, this I'm must be for Kevin It does suck. This must it be really does Carolina suck. fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's slightly better for me because we cover the ACC, so it's like a little bit better, but it's not it's not great. But but I'm happy for Kevin Keats. Keep the ice cream coming. I'd I'd love to see them go to the Final Four. His job oh. was on the line a few weeks ago. Hey, you remember He's when probably- I was. Do you remember when I was being clowned in D.C. and now Joe Ovius is telling me, oh, it's actually just spirited discussion. Okay. Like when John John Shire loses to NC State in the ACC tournament, oh, he could be on the hot seat or he could be facing a lot of pressure next year. The dude's in the Elite Eight a year after winning the ACC championship in Greensboro. He's fine and he's recruiting better than anybody in America. So I guess maybe the biggest takeaway is Carolina's fine. This was a successful year for them. NC State, oh my God. Duke, they got a good one in John Shire, doing about as good as you could expect anyone stepping into the shoes that he just stepped into. And Wake, the standard has been lifted. 20 plus wins in two of the last three when you didn't have a 20 win season, even in the John Collins year in uh, 2017 and the 2010s, this might be as good as we've had it in a very, very long time in the state of North Carolina for everybody. And I don't know if I would be willing to say that a few years ago, the day that we learned that Roy retired on April Fool's Day, and then we learned about Kay, like, oh, man, what are these guys going to be like? Hubert and Shire, we just don't know. And is Steve Forbes the guy? It was after his first year that didn't go so well. And Kevin Keats, oh, I, 
Like this, this is a really good spot for Tobacco Road Hoops and a really good spot for the ACC. We'll be back Sunday to recap that game. Duke NC State in the Elite Eight for a trip to the Final Four. Let that wash over you.